Hello, people of God. It's Pastor Stephen at St. Paul's United Church of Christ in Amityville on a very windy Friday the 30th, last day of April at St. Paul's United Church of Christ in Amityville. And you might be hearing the bells in the background. They were turned off for a funeral a couple of weeks ago, and uh, now we have them turned back on. Um, it's very windy, and I knew there'd be a lot of wind noise, so I decided to record in here. And this is, these are the four church buildings that I have photographed in my office, and I thought maybe I'd tell you a little bit about them. By the way, it has been so windy, I've seen uh, leaves and petals from flowering trees just blowing by the windows. I expect any moment now, Miss Gulch on her bicycle just to go flying by like in the Wizard of Oz. Yes, it's pretty windy out there, so be careful. And uh, so anyway, we're going to start with this church right here. It is uh, a Victorian era church building. See it right there? That's the um, first congregational church in Green, New York, where I grew up. I went to Sunday school from about first grade there, uh, all through graduation, and it's where I was confirmed. But I didn't get to be ordained there because it burned down while I was still in college. And I remember having a farewell service to that church on the lawn. We just put out uh, folding chairs and had a final service, a lot of tears, as we remembered all the special things that had happened inside uh, those walls. And the pastor wisely realized we need to, we don't need to have the charred remains just staying for weeks and weeks or months. So the next day, bulldozers came and tore it down. And then the work came of being the church on the road, and other churches in the community offered for two, three months at a time for the church to use their building for worship, maybe at a different time from when they did. And during that time, the church started thinking about how will we rebuild. They had good insurance and decided to build a new building not to copy what it used to have, but to think forward about what kind of ministry God was calling the church to and what kind of church would facilitate that kind of ministry that we envisioned in the future. And so this building right here, the picture is a little faded from the sun. Um, that's the church that stands today, and that's where I was eventually ordained um, when I finished seminary. And those pictures are faded. They were given to me at my ordination, and they've been in every office and every church that I've served. And I started to collect more pictures and take more. This picture right here is a church that I served in California. And believe it or not, that's an army surplus church building. Yes, left over from World War II. They had extra chapels. They put them up for sale. And this church community said, we'll take one. And they built a, a basement with all the, the classrooms. And then that chapel just kind of was set, I'm sure, in pieces, but it was set on top of there. So it was a prefab, very straightforward, basic kind of a, a chapel. That's the first, uh, or that's the community church of Atascadero, California, where I served for four years as an associate pastor right after I was ordained. And then after that, the next church I served was Lihue United Church in Lihue. Hawaii, the island of Kauai, and you might be able to tell that, I'm sorry for the glare, but that church building is built of um, lava rock, and I got to talk with one of the builders, this ancient Japanese-American guy who had been part of building that church about 50 years before I had gotten there, and uh, had quite a story. So I'm going to sit down, and I normally print my notes for my Corin vlog. And uh, since I'm here in the office, I thought I could just save a sheet of paper and just read them from from here. Let me tell you a few things. Our confirmands are having their first in-person class this Sunday afternoon. They've been on Zoom all year long since January, and they're going to get together in the sanctuary and we're going to practice the service that they have been preparing. Each one of them is responsible for a different portion of the service, and um, uh, so pray for them as they're preparing that. It's very important what they're doing, and it's a good growing process for them, and, and they'll be leaving the service on Mother's Day, May 9th, and shoe fly pie orders are coming in. You need to, to call Nancy Everhart by 
I think the 9th of May, and then they will be available Friday afternoon, 21st of May. The next day is the big community yard sale, which we're going to jump in with both feet and have our white elephant sale and have tables available for other people to, to rent and uh, sell things. And I think in the newsletter we have some information about when you can drop things by. And uh, our scripture for today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 21. And you can see right there, I'm just reading my, my notes right there. There's a scripture. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Now, a pastor friend just posted that or a reference to that scripture, and he had a question that I want to throw out to you. It's kind of interesting. If someone were to, if you were to be arrested for being a Christian, supposing that that was against the law, would there be enough evidence found for you to be convicted? An interesting twist of a question. Could you be convicted of being a Christian? Would there be enough evidence to prove it? I'll just leave that with you to think about. And uh, we, we have sad news, and that will lead to our prayer for the day. One of our members, Benita Fick, or Bonnie, uh, just passed away of COVID-19. And some of you may know her. Um, she, her daughter, Ashley Hopped, is a member of the church. Um, and Ashley has three lovely daughters, who would be the granddaughters of Bonita, um, that you've probably seen in some of our Christmas pageants and some things like that. Um, so we're praying for the Hopped family and for the Fick family. In fact, let's pray now. Lord God, we pray for those who grieve, including uh, all the family and loved ones of Bonita, and we pray for your peace for them, and we pray that those of us who are able would be able to share comfort that comes from you by your Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know, uh, I'm expecting, I, I've called and I expect to hear a little bit of what the plans are for, for remembering her or for a service. Oh, by the way, that sticking out behind my head is my first mandolin, and I got it in a junk shop. Uh, I just went in, it was, you know, lots of secondhand stuff, and my eyes always go to instruments, and I thought, what's that little guitar? Well, it's a handmade, homemade mandolin. It's almost unplayable, but I've kept it um, because that kind of moved me into folk music and eventually bluegrass music and um, it's basically good for a wall hanging right now it's more of a piece of art than something that i can play um, anyway our song for the day is uh will be our introit this sunday and it's called lead me lord lead me lord i will follow Lead me, Lord, I will go. You have called me, I will answer. Lead me, Lord, I will go. And I think then it changes keys and it goes up a little bit from that. So that's our song. That's our last day of April. And um, I'll see you in virtual worship or in-person worship. and Or I will see you in our next vlog. Uh, next week. God bless you.